chemical engineer with the Transportation Public Works uh, Group in the Capital Delivery Division. And so well, what we do is we deliver uh, specifically stormwater capital improvements. <clears throat> Uh, and, and so what we're looking at tonight is uh, uh, the 6th Avenue channel uh, maintenance project. We're at about 60% on the plans right now. Uh, so what we're, gonna, what we're looking at is kind of 6th Avenue from uh, the I-20 service road down to um, uh, the Edgecliff Road, uh, which is right there at the border of the city of Fort Worth and Edgecliff Village. Uh, kind of all throughout here, most of you know, uh, that you know, there's been some erosion that's taken place uh, throughout the area, and uh, so we're looking to come in and maintain the channel and, and try to stop the erosion and mitigate some of the uh, some of the erosion that's taken place. Uh, here we have a handful of pictures of kind of what the channel looks like today, or, or, and uh, this may have this may have changed after a large rain event. I haven't heard anything, but if you if you've noticed any changes, feel free to to let us know what's changed. Um, but we, we do know there's some erosion taking place and we're, we're looking to uh, to come in and, and make some improvements to kind of stop the erosion and and uh, stabilize the channel. Uh, so this this exhibit, what we're showing is really just kind of the limits of what we're looking at. The, the pink that, or, or that magenta color kind of represents uh, where we're looking at, at are making these improvements. And, and the improvements that we're looking at in installing are pier and column walls. And so what that would in, consist of would be coming in and periodically drive, drilling piers into the ground uh, in, in the bank uh, and then installing a, a column and then putting a panel in between those various columns uh, to help support the, the bank so that the bank doesn't won't continue to erode in. Uh, now, now with that, you know, that there, I'm gonna go back one slide real quick just so we can kind of look at all the trees, you know, one of the things that we're working on in our design is trying to optimize how many trees we can leave because, you know, trees are trees are vital as far as they, they do help with some of the bank stabilization, but they also help uh, make an area look nicer, but, you know, that they do provide benefits. So our goal is to leave as many trees as we can, though we will have to remove some, uh, and we'll have more details on that in the next community meeting as far as, you know, what trees are going to, you know, we'll have a better idea of exactly which trees are going to have to come out. Um, and, and which ones may have to be trimmed, uh, but some, you know, some of the tree trimming is going to be kind of guesswork at this point because the trees are going to continue to grow uh, while we're finishing the design and getting ready to, to start construction. And so again, you know, the, the magenta lines represent where we intend to uh, to make the channel repairs. Uh, this engineering -y drawing uh, is really just intended to show kind of what that might look like. This dashed line. Uh, this dash line here represents what the kind of kind of what the channel looks like today, and then these piers that kind of go below the grade. That's the pier and column wall that we're looking to install. The, the blue lines on the screen represent where the existing fences are, and this is just one example. Um, this isn't the thing that this is exactly what it'll look like at every location, but this is just kind of a typical example of what it might look like. So you know, with this with this potential improvement, what we're having to balance is uh, the, the need for a potential U.S. Army Corps of Engineers permit, which the you know while we're the city and we do ask for our residents to get permits whenever they're doing different construction projects, uh, the federal government will ask us to get various uh, permits depending on what we're doing. And, and channels is one of those things that the federal government uh, does have some impact input into, and so that's all how we've kind of come to this uh, to this idea, so that we can try to minimize. Uh, the impacts of uh, to what's called navigable waters of the U.S. Uh, we're also making trying to want to, wanting to make sure uh, that we are not reducing the capacity of the channel. We want to make sure that the channel uh, will continue to carry the same amount of water uh, after construction is done as it does today, uh, so that we're not making any of the flooding worse. Uh, and we're also wanting to make sure, as, as I'm sure you, you may have noted on this, we're not planning to do anything to the channel bottom. That means that channel bottom is going to be a little, is going to continue to be natural, which means it may still continue to erode uh, at the channel bottom. But by putting in these pier and column walls, um, uh, what that does is that means that the channel won't continue to get wider and, and then start eating into different into various backyards. So that, that's that's kind of the solution that we're looking at here. Uh, just to run through a handful of the project details, 
uh, you know, our, our, the benefit of this project is we, we want to mitigate the erosion. Uh, that's, that's our primary goal. Uh, we're, we're working on design now. We anticipate, can anticipate completing the design in winter uh, of 2022-2023 and bidding and awarding uh, starting at that point with construction to possibly start in the spring, uh, depending on, on the, the responses of the bidders. And we're showing a two-year construction time frame right now. Um, while that's a little bit long for this channel in particular, but the way that we're bidding this project, we're coupling it with another project uh, that has a very similar type of repair method. As what that does, that provides some benefit to the city in that a con we'll get a single contractor who who can work on both of the both of the channels, which will reduce some of that unit cost because they'll have a bigger project to deal uh, to take care of. So we get some economies of the scale uh, when, when you have a bigger project. So we have a two-year time frame on here, not because this channel will take two years, but because we don't know which channel uh, that contractor would uh, would address first, if they would do this channel first or if they would address the other channel first. Uh, we just don't have that information at this time. Uh, so, so that's why the, the two-year timeline for, for construction. Uh, uh, the, our, the estimated cost at this point is about 1.3 million for the construction. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's stormwater revenue bond funded. And with that, I'll go ahead and open it up to any questions. Uh, so are, are, are there any questions that, that are in the chat, Mr. Crenshaw? No, I didn't see any. I think we can just, uh, like you've done in the past, maybe just go down the list with uh, anyone. Um, start I guess Jason maybe you want to go ahead and you can unmute and fire away hey can you hear me yes yes hey so I, I was just curious because uh, I know this channel kind of does some snaking around and it ends up behind Greenbrier and uh, we've noticed that there's a large stretch of the channel that's got that's completely concreted out with like concrete ramp walls and concrete floor and I was just curious if there was a specific reason y'all were not doing that because it seems like that would be I don't, I don't, I, I don't completely understand y'all's diagram, but it seems like that would be more stable. I was just curious. Well, and, and so, you know, you know, concreting channels is really something that the U, the U.S. Army Corps, Corps of Engineers really frowns on. And so, while it can be done, what that will wind up triggering is what's called an individual permit for a project, which is going to trigger, you know, potentially maybe a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars worth of mitigation banking. Uh, which means, okay, now, now, city, you've caused this loss of of this of, of what's called below the ordinary high water mark. You've caused this loss of a natural resource, and so now, since you can't make it up in your project because you're putting concrete everywhere, now you have to pay into a mitigation bank uh, that that will serve that purpose. And there aren't really any mitigation banks nearby, which means you know those mitigation bank dollars would be put in other areas. So with the solution that we're that we're uh, that we've come up with now, it allows us to not trigger that mitigation bank need and, and keep the channel a little bit more natural as far as the flow line of it goes or the, or the bottom of it goes. Gotcha. I mean, I guess as long as it's effective, that's what matters most to us as residents. Right. But, uh, my other concern right. is so, something you sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll go back to this diagram again, you know, so the, the way this, you know, if this is the channel today, you know, the way that that erosion happens is like the bottom will start getting lower, which means those banks will start getting steeper. And then the banks will fall in and then the voice, then it'll be kind of wider again. The banks won't be as steep. Uh, so what these walls do, they kind of serve as cutoff walls so that as the channel may kind of naturally try to widen a little bit, it'll hit these hard points. And it won't be able to widen and, and get into private property. Gotcha. And yeah, that actually kind of brings me into my next question because you, you mentioned something earlier about not wanting the channel to get, uh, not not wanting the channel to uh, get narrower. And I'm I'm we're concerned about that because like I I don't know what everybody else's backyard looks like, but for me, like the only thing stopping my friend's fence from like being sideways into the creek is like a is a telephone pole and some of my like my next door neighbor on one side looks like even worse and i mean i, I haven't looked at our you know our title or, or anything but in my head we may have already even lost land because you know the fence line isn't always where the land is but my biggest concern is like 
that thing is huge behind my house. It's and I, I've never at it, when we moved in since we moved in probably I don't know eight years ago now something like that. Um, it's gotten substantially wider, like at, at least twice the width. And I got to tell you, I mean, the whole time I've lived here, I've never seen that thing even kind of full. And I'm not an engineer or anything, but I I just can't see why it needs to be as wide as it is, especially because that's not going to fix anybody's fence lines that are currently falling, like halfway falling into the creek. Because to us, it's, you know, it's it's basically a sewage channel. It's not like it's a creek where, you know, we could fish in it or, you know, it's it doesn't add any value to our homes. It's just, a you know, it's just a sewer creek behind our house that's trying to eat our, our property. And so I'm just curious as to why there's not going to be any effort to to narrow the bank in its widest parts so that the, to fix some of that erosion that's already happened that's already like i mean the power pole behind my house i don't know i mean i don't know if it'll last the two years because there's so much erosion before it falls into the creek yeah and, and you know, tr trying to, to shrink a channel down is, is not an easy thing to do because if you start saying, oh, well, well we, we want to shrink it down and then all of a sudden somebody somebody floods because the storm came uh, that we haven't seen, we, you know, that, that's not really a risk that we can, that we can really take. Um, you, you know, I, I know you've been there for eight years and, and you've, seen, you've seen some good sized storms, but more than likely we haven't seen the what we would consider as the design storm to come through here, which is why we just really can't reduce the channel capacity. Uh, now on the on the utility pole, uh, if, it, if it's leaning more, uh, you know, those utility poles, poles are owned by Encore, especially if they have power on them. And if it's leaning, I think, I don't remember what their threshold is, but they do have a threshold for if it's leaning beyond a certain amount, they'll come out and set a new pole to address that uh, while, while we're still working to get this the this design uh, up and running. Gotcha. I, I guess in my head, there's the, the current capacity of the channel isn't really by design. It's just by nature in my head. And so to me, right. I, and, and, it doesn't and, feel like and it's... That's a, go ahead. But that, that, and that's, that's heavily a function of when the area was developed. I, I want to say the houses were built in the 60s is that about right yeah they were built this house was built in the 50s in fact my wife's grandma uh actually was the first owner of the house we're in and in fact when when she bought the house she was actually told by the city that that would be an alleyway which is how the rest of the neighborhood works uh which obviously i don't i don't see that happening at this point um i think that was before the interstate was even built which um mm. but uh yeah it just it's it it just seems like there's no way that it needs to be that wide. But you know, like I said, I'm not an engineer, but uh, it's just kind of weird. But most likely, when when the channel was put in, it, it it had fairly low standards as far as what it needed to carry. Uh, and then if you just kind of zoom out a little bit and take a little bit bigger, bigger picture of the area and think about how much has changed in that timeline, uh, from a, how much additional concrete is now on the ground. As, you know, so the channel was probably never really designed, and really, what what an eroding channel is telling us is that it's responding to changes in the environment, uh, which would re, you know result in you know how it, the, the changes are, that it's responding to is how much water is it is it carrying, how steep is its slope, and, and how much sediment is coming through it. So a channel naturally does try to balance those things out, and that's where, that's what we're seeing happening right now, uh, and, and so we're we're trying to. You know, the goal is to mitigate that erosion so that it doesn't continue uh, onto private property. Yeah, well, I, I mean, part of the like back like five years ago when I when I first started calling the city about this, um, the one one of the things I I told them is that at some point the I guess it was the water department. So I don't know who's in charge of what, but uh, somebody came back there with like a bobcat type vehicle and created that one-to-one -one drop off. But when they did that, they, they made the channel like another two, three, like another couple few feet wider uh, and like kind of made the problem worse right then. But I guess it probably prevented the erosion from be getting any worse than it, it did. I don't know, but um, it, it kind of feels like they, they chipped off more than nature would have to begin with, but it, mm -hmm. I, it's just kind of weird. Um, 
but yeah, it, it, I guess my biggest concern is that, especially with construction two years out, that this just might not be sufficient for to to do to fix what y'all are trying to fix. Because uh, like it it may be too little, too late for some. Um, I you know, and it's especially if we get that storm like you're talking about, uh, especially after a summer like we've had. I know with the recent storms, it did it did seem to get worse. I I don't know that it got feet worse, of course, uh, it probably just inches, but um summers like this that are followed up by crazy you know like a hurricane season style torrential but downpour then yeah i i just don't know that two years out this type of plan is is enough but i i guess we'll see what happens right and and so, and so like i said you know you know we're, we're slating two years for the construction right now uh with, with construction to start and hopefully in spring of 2023 uh but since we don't have a contractor on board at this time, we don't know what that contractor's plan would be uh, as far as which channel this one or the or the other one, uh, if it, which one they would hit first. And we can certainly we'd certainly be working with them to come up with that plan uh, yeah. as as we get someone on board. And it could be that they may have two crews and say, "Hey, we're just going to get both done all at once." Yeah, uh, I was, but, I was but actually that, curious about generally, that. Go ahead. That's not generally how they're going to do it. They're normally going to have you know, a lot of times these these contractors will have a crew that they do channels, and they'll they'll also be doing other types of work. You know, maybe they do storm drain work on uh, with a different crew, and so usually they just send that crew to one job. Uh, but but again, we since we don't know who the contractor is because we haven't bid this work yet, uh, you know that'd be something we'd be working with them and. Uh, you know, we'll have additional community meetings. You know, we'll, once we have the 90% plans ready, we'll have another community meeting. And then once we have the contractor on board, we'll have a, a pre-construction meeting. Uh, so before the contractor shows up, uh, we'll have a meeting with the contractor on board uh, to, to kind of talk about how they're planning this out. Gotcha, yeah, when you were talking about earlier how uh, you didn't know which one they would do first, I was kind of curious as to why the city would not dictate to them which one would be done first based on priority. Mind you, the, the, whatever the other channel is may be of a higher priority, I don't know, but uh, I just right. thought it was and, weird and that it, it made it sound like the contractor got to choose. Yeah, and, and so there, there are times when the city does set that, set a specific schedule, but you know, some a lot of times things like that will fall under like the contractor's means and methods. Uh, you know, they they've, they had the contract to get the project done, uh, and, and and if we have a compelling reason to set a particular sequencing, then, then we can certainly do that. Um, I, I I I don't know. I will have, we'll have to spend some time thinking about that as we finish up the design and get it ready for bidding, if if we need to put in a specific sequencing. That's good to know. I, I I appreciate that, and I'll I'll, I'll uh, definitely be at the next meeting as long as they all send out a, another mailer like this or let me know by email or something. Um, I just yeah, like I said, I just I'm the I'm glad y'all are I'm glad we're finally doing something about this. But the, the like I said, the plan does make me nervous. But uh, you know, I just I just hope so, somebody's you know I hope y'all are really like walking down this channel and seeing it with your own eyes because it's it's huge. I mean it's it's ginormous. But, uh, but yeah, thank y'all for at least getting something going on us. All right. Thank you, Jason, for all that. And, um, we will be in touch more. We got a few other on the line. Um, let's see another online user, uh, is it Jose? Is that, do you have any questions or want to unmute? You don't have to, but if you want to have an opportunity, if not, that's okay. Um, okay, we can, okay, that's great. Uh, call in user, I don't know if she was able to see the details there or not, or had any questions. Call, it shows on the screen as call in user 2. Uh, do we need to request unmute? No, it shows that she's unmuted she's unmuted yeah but may have accidentally muted the phone or something well we're available anyways justin you can 
There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and, uh, uh, for the benefit of the call-in user, I'll, I'll go ahead and spell out my, my email address. It's justin.nailer, uh, last name is spelled N as in Nancy, A-Y-L-O-R, at fortworthtexas.gov. And my phone number is 817-392-7953. And so, uh, uh, Mrs. Dakan and I are, have already been exchanging emails. Uh, so, if, you know, feel free to email me or give me a call uh, if, you, if you have any questions. You know, after we get off this meeting, uh, oh no, I wish I would would have asked that question. You know, we're, we're still here, we're available. Also, uh, just to remind everyone, this is being recorded, and it'll be posted. Uh, on the city website, and we'll get the details for that after the recording is processed and we get the recording to put up. Um, and that'll allow us to, others who didn't have the benefit of being here this evening can watch it and see the, the presentation. And of course, as Justin mentioned, there will be another meeting coming up at 90% uh, to to give you a further update as the engineering progresses. I think that's about it, Justin. Anything else you wanna conclude with? I wanna thank everybody for coming and, be, and being interested in what's going on uh, in, in your area. I, I appreciate getting to hear all your voices and, 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 and your concerns. Again, reach out if you have any questions. And I guess with that, we'll go ahead and uh, Call this meeting adjourned. So thank y'all. Thank you everyone for attending and have a good evening.